you to, okay? And so you see that that's going to be an immediate problem, you dividing by zero. So when Q2 is 90 degrees, you cannot evaluate Q1 double prime, right? There was no such thing happening with omega x, omega y, omega z. That just didn't exist. So somehow we're paying this huge cost and so the equations are bigger and you have a divide by zero error, which means these things don't actually work particularly well. Now, Q2 prime didn't have that problem, but Q3 time, F Q3 prime did, you have Ixx cosine of Q2. Now, for those folks who have heard these, I think these languages are really important. This is called gimbal lock, okay? So some people call this gimbal lock. It's like there's no gimbals. This is a book. This is a singularity. So this has got to do with the fact that the variables you chose aren't that helpful. They aren't that really great. All right, so before moving on, I want to say, is there something we could do to do a change of variables to make us go from, instead of these really long equations, let's just go back and use omega x, omega y, omega z, because those are really efficient in giving us equations of motion, and let's just do a change of variables from the q's to the omegas. Why? Because we'll use that again for the quaternions. So when we get the quaternions, we're going to do the same exact game. This is really easy to understand as opposed to quaternions, which are much harder. So I want to do a change of variables from q's to omegas. All right, so um, if you go up, type list again. We're going to start at the top, the top one more time. And this goes slowly. It will scroll up to omega. All right, up, 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 up. OK, so, so here is how the rotation matrix ends up. And more importantly, here's omega b and n. Now, it used to be omega b and n was omega x, bx plus omega y, by, plus omega z, bz. So that's what was there before. That was so much simpler. And alpha used to be omega x prime bx plus omega y prime by plus omega z prime bz. bz. So right over here, you sort of see, I'm already paying this enormous cost by using angles. So I want to make a change of variables to go back to the omegas, because the omegas were way more efficient. So let's do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to angles.tax. And we're going to now introduce, we're going to introduce right after variable q1 double prime, we're going to have variable omega x prime, omega y prime. We're going to go back and say we're going to use them both. We're going to use now both angles and uh, angular velocity. We'll do the same thing for quaternions. All right, so I also want to get rid of one of the derivatives on the, on the primes now, because I'm going to say I don't want the second derivatives, I just want two sets first order OGs. Good. Okay. Um, now, I do want to keep track of orientation, but I don't want to write the equations of motion in terms of the Q double dots. I want to write in terms of omega x. So, right after uh, B dot rotate, hit enter, you're actually going to do B period set angular velocity. Okay. Yep, just put that back into the game. And actually put it before the B dot rotate if you would mind. It, 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 it will matter in a second. Okay, so. Yep, just leave that there. That's good. And uh, instead of B dot rotate, what, um, we're going to actually use something a little bit weird. We're going to just say B dot set rotation matrix. So all I'm going to do is say, yes, we need the rotation matrix, but we don't want to use the rotate command because I'm not interested in this really complicated omega BNN. I'm interested in a much smaller one. All right, so uh, let's just run that to see what happens. Oh, but before we do, um, um, if you would mind, we're going to input this as omega x prime, omega x prime, and that is y prime, z prime. And then bring this. just omega x? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I could actually just bring this two up. and then bring the open plot statement up. Genesis.exe space and uh, say angles.txt. Okay. 
Uh, so, little problem. We want to now be solving for omega x prime. So is that right? That way it already knows that q's and omegas are related? Not yet, no, so I think that's great. I'm glad you picked up on that. You can just take Okay, so okay. just like Natalie's always ahead of the game, um, there's no OD associated with Q1. So it says, well, isn't this beautiful? We have these nice short ones, omega x, omega y, omega z, beautiful short. We have, a, if you go up a little bit, if you scroll up, you have this, you have the rotation matrix, so you're like, okay, good, I got the rotation matrix. Uh, I have my angular velocity, angular acceleration, so I've got what looks like everything, but we never related the two. So, Hit enter, okay, and it will run. Everything's going to be great. Hit enter, enter, enter. Are we solving for omega x omega? Uh, I guess don't we have the equations though? This is the same as what we did before. Right? Exactly. So it's beautiful. So the dynamics is great, but we have no relationship between the omegas and the q dots. Why doesn't it know just to ignore the q dots? Oh, because it we, really, we didn't have set inertia. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be another okay. QDOS. It's exactly what it's going to do. Go ahead, enter, 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 enter. Okay. It's going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. It's like, it's going to have a great time ignoring. All right, so bring it up, and you'll see the angles are, you know, ignored, and it's going to be, here's omega x, omega y. So it's great. It's ignoring the angles. But I really want to know what the angles are. So. XF here. So now go back, hit enter. So now type help. Now there's this new, this, eventually this command will change names, but this command will be back, stay, will stay in the game for a while. There's something called KINDIFS, K-I-N-D-I-F-F-S. All right, so it's a strange name, but what it does is if you scroll up, it says, I will do this work for you. So I will relate the kinematical differential equations, B and N, sequence, body x, y, z, and these are the angles. And it will say, I will do it in terms of omega x, omega y, omega z. So that's it. Now come down just to make sure we get the right se sequence. This, like I said, this is it's not it's a command that will eventually get phased. I will come down just to the example. Enter. OK. So all right. So we'll eventually get down to example two, which is the Euler parameters of the trains. But uh, let's start with example one. So we have this, these things, just like we're looking at it, rigid frames, variables, variables, you already have the angular velocity, and then you're basically saying there's kinematical differential equations that relate A and B. Um, but notice this is B, and this is A, and this is A, and this is B. All right, so we want to we make sure we get the order right. The new syntax will eventually say B get kinematical differential equations from A, so it'll be more so you'll be doing, and you might want to grab this line right here. All right, good. All right, and then bring that in. So that's the line that's going to relate the Q dots to the, to the omega x, y, and z. Again, all of this you've done, you have done. When you did the rolling disk, you did all of this by hand, manually. You also did this for the sphere. You did this also manually. And it takes a long time. This is not like a two-minute exercise. This is like sit down for 45 minutes to implement basically this command. So let's try that now. And um, is body one two three okay? Uh, body one two three is fine. I think you can also do it. Try X Y Z as well. I think X Y Z also works. I think either one works actually. So let's try. Am I still you're, you're, uh, you're, you can you type exit and yeah. hit up arrow a few times, you'll get that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we make us a good X out of here for a second. Go up a little bit. I'll scroll up. I want to see what the, what came out of Ken Dips. Okay. So what this does is this relates the Q dots to the omegas. You'll see that although 
you don't have any trouble with the dynamic equations with divide by zero problems. You still have the same exact problem with this divide by zero here. All right, so what does that mean? It means that for practical purposes, although you can know the orientation of any object, there are going to be places where your equations just don't work. So it will turn out that the major disadvantage of using boiler angles is exactly this problem. It's like, I can't be guaranteed that I can avoid this sometimes. So in general, multi-body programs almost exclusively will not use boiler angles. Right? They just say, well, we can't avoid this problem, so what are we going to do? Well, you're probably going to have to move to quaternions in order to do general 3D orientation. So we have to invent this entire, like, if this worked, if this just didn't be, if this was just not there, somehow we didn't have this divide by zero problem, you wouldn't be here today, life would be great, and things that we wouldn't worry about so much of this crazy stuff. But you have to have an entire, like, focus on quaternions for one reason, this divide by zero error, all right? So this is the problem, and um, if you can avoid it, I would recommend using these angles. If someone says, look, do I really need to go to quaternions? If you don't, don't, don't bother. I mean, it doesn't really help you that much. There are some advantages to quaternions, other than just avoiding a divide by zero error, but um, those are getting to be less and less significant as computational speed increases. All right, so now let's move to what is a quaternion and what is it good for? All right, so... Oops, sorry. I you may want to go back, because otherwise it's going to be weird looking. Yeah. Okay. The beach looks good again. <laughs> All right, so um, let's go back to help Kindos again and look at the second example. It's uh, diffs. It means differential equations. Right again, so. All right, uh, so scroll up again. All right, so this one not so good. This one's going to be the next one that we want. The, on the list of kin diffs, it will turn out that there's sort of four general ways that people tend to do things. Or the angles are the most common, and if you can avoid the singularity, great, use it. The next most common way is, is quaternions. Uh, so we can use the word Euler, you can use quaternion, whatever, but it's the next most common way are the quaternions. The third most common are what's called Rodriguez parameters. They were a special subclass, really, of the Euler parameters or quaternions. What they're good for is um, if you have an object where you can't bend back 180 degrees. So when you saw like this, this first one, the problem came at 90 degrees. All right. So if let's say you were looking at wrist and you were looking at how the wrist can orient itself relative to the form. You'd say, can this ever get to 90? You'd say, yes. OK, then that's a problem. Then this may not be a good or their angles may not be a good simulation. However, if you say, can this fold completely back onto it, in other words, can it rotate 180 degrees, you say, well, no, it can't rotate 180 degrees, then you can start thinking about using Rodriguez parameters. There's only three of them, row one, row two, row three, as opposed to the Euler parameters, which have four, four um, parameters, right? So the Euler parameters are a set of four variables, four, as opposed to these, which are a set of three, and opposed to these, which are also a set of three. Now, the problem is if you use four variables where you could have used three, there has to be now a constrained relationship between them. These are now not four free independent variables. They're four variables which, with a relationship between them. These are three variables that can do whatever they want. So we have to actually now introduce a constraint. Oh, okay, so in addition to say, okay, I gotta get rid of my singularity, what do I have to do? You actually have to introduce an extra variable. As of today, 2013, my understanding is there is none to this day, uh, uh, there are no three parameter sets, okay, that actually can avoid a, a singularity. I was told, uh, and I'm not seeing the proof, that it's proven that you can actually have a three parameter set that avoids the singularities, period. So it just doesn't exist. I have not seen the proof, and until I do, I can't state that with definiteness, but this is the way we avoid the singularity. We introduce an extra parameter, and that's our job. All right, the other way of avoiding singularity is to just use every element of the rotation matrix, all nine elements, as variables, okay? That's called, and it's called Poisson's kinematical differential equations. That is used infrequently nowadays, so I would say, eh, why? Because now you have nine variables, 
and there's a ton of interact interactions. I mean, it's not just there's just now with these four, these four, these four variables. There is one relationship between them. It's really sort of you know it's not so bad. So you get four and four uh, parameters minus one three. When you introduce the nine, there's like 27 different relationships, and they're not linear. All right, so these are um, can be used in, in industry. They are used occasionally, just not that often. All right, so that's the last set. So those are the, are the four that we're going to worry about. I right, hit enter. There's actually a, a better version of this command. No, there's another hit enter. At the very bottom of this help file. There it is come up a little bit related. Set where the parameters are the that one. We can we can actually use this one. That's one, one. Just do a help on that. Let's set where the parameters. And it's got the newer syntax. So this is, you know, and by the way, or the parameters are also called quaternions for those who like language. So this has got the newer syntax. B set. Quaternion, ODE, A, so it's, it's the way we want to go with this. All right, so let's get into what is a quaternion uh, next and how do you use it. So we'll stop for a second. These of you now have a really good idea why you care so much. Disadvantage is really, this is like the entire reason for quaternions is this one word, there's a singularity. And now you know and understand what that means. And again, sometimes they call it um, uh, gimbal lock. All right, so. Um, I will say this, it's really interesting. Sometimes you try to talk to a group of people and say, hey, what are quaternions? And you're like, let's not even have this conversation because so much of the language that is in 331 has to be understood in order for you to even start to have a context for why you care so much. All right, so I want to start with talking about a complex number as an analogy to quaternions. Um, and or the premise. So a complex number, you can think of one as being um, uh, 3 plus 5i. Okay? So that's a complex number. Um, the 3 is a real number. The 5 is a real number. And uh, this plus sign is actually really notation. This is notation only. This is like a separator. Okay, so the plus sign, it really just says, I'm not really adding like and like. This is not apples plus apples. On the right hand side, you have an imaginary number. On the left hand side, you have a real number. So this combination on the right is, is an imaginary number. So this combination is imaginary. This on the left is certainly a real number. All right, and this plus sign is a separator. It's literally no different than putting, and this is actually used a lot, if you look at old textbooks, this is how they used to write complex numbers, just 3 comma 5i. We mostly nowadays use a plus sign, and we're comfortable with that, but it means nothing. It doesn't really mean you're adding anything. 3 plus 3 is 6, that's an operation. This is really a formal, a formal sum. All right, so that's a complex number. All right. Then we have the idea of a quaternion. Now, a quaternion is very, very analogous to this in that it looks like this. It would be 2 plus 4i plus 5j plus 7k. This is a quaternion. Again, these pluses are just formalities. It's really a combination of four things. Sometimes people put 2, comma, 4, comma, 5, comma, 7. And quaternions were the rays before vectors. So it, it, if you look at um, uh, Clifford algebra, you'll see that in the 1850s, before vectors were invented by Gibbs, quaternions were dominating the mathematical landscape. 
after vectors were invented, in, 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 like, in, like 1897 or so, slowly and gradually vectors just started displacing quaternions. And nowadays, we almost no one studies um, quaternions at all until you actually get to this one little problem here. So an entire branch of algebra was invented here in 1850, all right? And this was invented by Hamilton. And it, it was before vectors. And I want to just make sure you're clear on this. And this is why we don't care about it anymore. So we don't study this anymore. Everybody used to study it who were grad students. And now we just do vectors in high school and we're, we're, we dispense with this. So, each of these things, though, 2, 4, 5, and 7, each of these is called, instead of being a real number, they're called or the parameters. So each of these numbers are called or the parameters. So this one's called E0, this next one's called E1, etc. And this is E3. All right, so these are or the parameters. And as you know, uh, you know, Euler's history goes way back, you know, 1730.